Good evening. It's no secret that I was uh, once a mole catcher. I've worked in pest control for a very long time and I specialised in moles in later years and especially in clearing moles from agricultural land. And uh, I rarely took pictures of it, but I did it commercially. There's a little picture of Florence there, Florence the little terrier, with a few moles on on the quad bike. And it's very unusual for me to take those kind of pictures, but I did do it occasionally. Anyway, it's that time of year. It's that time of year when Parliament and the politicians are busy doing other things and the newspapers are short of stories. And every now and again, a leech appears and offers them a story that they think uh, will resonate with the public. This is one of those stories that comes up nearly every year. People will mention this issue about moles hanging on fences and the perpetually outraged suddenly pop up. Farmer haters suddenly pop up on social media telling everybody how awful it is that farmers do these things. And, you know, let's throw in the odd mention of badgers while we're at it, just because badgers are so iconic to these kind of people. Anyway, it is a bit of an issue, this this thing about hanging dead moles on fences. And a lot of the time, I think the issue isn't necessarily about hanging moles on fences. It's more likely that the people that are kicking up about it don't actually understand the reasons why moles are controlled at all. And they see a few dead moles on a fence and think there's some kind of mass genocide taking place. And genocide is one of the words that is often used for this. But it doesn't stop people, you know, taking the opportunity to have a good dig at farmers. So people like Blisto here telling us all that the, the countryside is sterile and farmers are all terrible. I hate to break it to you, mate. You need to get off your ass and get out there and look because the countryside I see every day of my life isn't sterile. It isn't free of wildlife. It's a healthy, living, working place. It's never looked healthier or better than it does now in my lifetime. And then, of course, you get the people who think that they're right about everything and those of us that live and work in the countryside are wrong about everything and get really, really upset when they can't inflict their will upon us when they can't force us to change their mind by their clever book learning knowledge let me tell you emma you are not always right enough about emma thankfully we have people like gareth Wynne jones on twitter and on the radio and on television who are able to jump up when things like this happen and try and put forward a slightly different point of view that's that's not scaremongering and sensationalist, of which the kind of people like Moonbat are so good at doing. Thank you, Gareth, for jumping up straight away to put the, the sensible uh, point of view across that this is about controlling the numbers of moles in places where they, where, which aren't their natural habitat and where they are conflicting with, with farming interests and people's interests. This is not the time to talk about the reasons for mole control. I'm happy to talk at length about the reasons for controlling moles, and I will do that if that's what people want. I'll probably do it anyway at some point. But now is not the time for that. The other person that popped up very quickly to try and put right some of the wrongs being spouted by the greenwashers is Jacqueline Davis. Thank you, Jacqueline great few posts you've put on there trying to put forward a slightly different point of view make these people think differently because realistically you know the countryside is a living and working place and as such the best people to advise the general public who haven't got time to find out for themselves are those of us who live and work in the countryside not these people who want to sell books or sell marxist theories like the moon bat Anyway, I was prompted to make this little outburst, this little speech by Pomona, excuse me, who uh, seems like a fairly rational and sensible person. And I had a good conversation with Pomona. I don't know whether Pomona is a, a, a man or a woman or, or whatever the terminology is now for those who can't make their mind up. But I, I presume it's a woman. 
So um, thank you, Pomona, for your your sensible discussion and the sensible discussion that we had. Um, and we, you, you, you made it quite clear that you don't understand the reason for hanging dead moles on fences, which is fair enough. Um, you might not approve of, of people doing it, but I, I did say it at the time, and I'll say it again. It is the best form of advertising for mole catchers. Um, when I was starting out specialising in moles, uh, I was struggling at times to pay my mortgage, and that's a that's a real harsh reality. Making the choices between um, buying food and paying the mortgage and any form of advertising that I could use I would utilize at any opportunity and actually the best form of advertising is word of mouth it's no good just saying you can do the job people want to actually see that you can do the job and the structure of my business was such that I charge for each mole I caught when I went on a farm I said to the farmer these are your dead moles. What would you like me to do with them? Some of the farmers said, put them in a bucket there and I'll dispose of them. Some of them said, I'll take your word for it, chuck them under the hedge. And some of them said, hang them up on, the, on a bit of wire somewhere and I'll count them up when I pay you, which was fine. When I talk about advertising, um, you don't have to put your name and number up beside the dead moles to advertise. I'll give you a classic example of that. A field of moles that I cleared on Exmoor was visited by an agronomist. Now, I'm presuming that everybody knows what an agronomist are. They're contractors that come in to advise farmers on soil health and crop protection and, and the right seeds to use and so on and so forth. They, they look at the science of crop growing and crops include grassland, of course. This particular farm was visited by an agronomist who saw the dead moles and saw the improvement in the soil health in that field after I'd removed the moles and said to the farmer, that's a good job job. Who did you get to do that? The farmer very kindly said, it's Matt. He's a lovely chap. He only charges me X amount of money per mole that he catches and he always lets me see the dead moles. That agronomist, every single farm he visited that year that had moles, told them about me. That is the best sort of advertising there is, especially when you're hard up and you're desperately trying to make a living. I might have already said it, I rarely post pictures of dead animals, mainly because I rarely take pictures of dead animals. Um, there's a picture here of some rabbits hanging on a gate, and some people might be outraged by seeing those rabbits hang on a gate. And I didn't take them as some kind of trophy of a successful hunt. I took this picture because I was managing a site for a customer that didn't actually visit the site very often. He wasn't on site at the time. And I wanted to show him that I was actually doing what he was paying me to do. The reason they're hung on the gate like that is to allow the rabbits to cool. So this, these rabbits were all in one drop box in a rabbit fence. And they were removed from the drop box and humanely dispatched. And then hung on the gate to cool while I went off to check the other, the other drop boxes, the other traps. Um, it might horrify some of you, but the reality is... Those rabbits were already dead when they were hung on the gate. They knew nothing about it. The other rabbits aren't sitting in their burrows looking at that picture of dead rabbits on the gate and saying, gosh, aren't people horrible? Uh, it's, it's an emotional uh, load of nonsense, to be honest. And as I say, I rarely take pictures of dead animals. But here's some dead rats. This is nearly a thousand rats that were killed by Florence and the Machine, my two terriers, uh, on a commercial free-range egg operation. The chickens had reached the end of their life and had been removed and the chicken shed was winched and underneath the chicken shed there were a lot of rats living. Now I could have spent two or three weeks poisoning those rats for them to die underground but actually as it happens it was easier to go in with the terriers and let them do what nature drives them to do and kill the rats. I did take a picture of it because it was a memorable day because it was Florence's first big outing. And I wanted to show my wife, to be honest. That's the only reason. It's not a photo that I share publicly very often. Anyway, I suspect it's enough from me, but I will just mention Tim. Tim, no, it didn't work for you, mate. I suspect it's enough from me, but I will just mention Tim. Tim, no, it didn't work for you, mate. Sorry to break it to you. They don't work. So hurry along the stacks on foot. The master's on his way. Hello, hello, we're following through from Brandon to Port.